Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today I'm going to be speaking about motivation versus inspiration. And you'll notice that I've tagged a lot of people in this conversation because it was actually last year and I can't believe it's taken me so long to actually speak about this. But last year I put a post on Facebook and I asked people about their thoughts about motivation and inspiration. And I got such a beautiful response from so many people. And what they had to say has inspired thought in me, has, um, has got me pondering and thinking more deeply on the topic. So for that I'm incredibly grateful. And I'd like to give credit to those people, so I've named them um, so that they can realise that I actually do value very, very much what they had to share with me. And through all this pondering and thinking, what I've come to realise is that the world we currently live in isn't a motivation or an inspiration world, that it's actually a combination. And that just observing sort of life in the last 20 to 40 years um, maybe just slightly over 40 <laughs> of my lifespan, um, I can see that it's starting to shift. Um, that the world used to be so much about motivation, um, about things that you had to do, the things that you should do, things that you must do, things that you had to make yourself get up and do. And I can see that shift and I love so much that most of the people that commented on the question I had spoke about inspiration being the most important aspect because it just I just feel so blessed to have so many amazing wonderful people in my life that see life that way because to me inspiration is it's the source of creation and allowing inspiration into your life and actually a few weeks ago I did a video specifically on how to allow space for inspiration so and I'll put a link to it in the notes below so if you want to know more about how allowing space for inspiration, I'm not going to go into it too much today, then please listen to that, that um, episode that I did. So whilst the world is moving more towards a, a place where inspiration is valued and where inspiration is recognised, um, we still live in a world where things there are some things that we need to motivate us to do. And I think this is where I was sitting on the fence because I, I, I love the feeling of inspiration. I love it when I get an inspired thought and um, I just can't contain myself and I have to go off and do something that sort of follows that thread of that inspiration. Um, and a lot of these videos that I do for you or podcasts or blogs or whatever it is that I'm doing come from that space of I sort of have this sort of moment of ah oh, I've got to share this or, or a question that I've got to follow a little thread through. But I've also recognised that there are things in my life that require motivation. Like, I'm not particularly great with accounts. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm not great with them. I've learned to do accounts. I can do accounts quite well, but it's not something that ignites me and makes me excited. Um, and I now have a process where I do it once a month on a certain day every month. Um, and I do. I have to motivate myself to do that. It's not something that I feel inspired to get up and do. I have learnt to reduce the resistance to it, so by doing it every month rather than leaving it in a mass sort of pile that I have to do at the end of the year, there is a lot less resistance to it. Um, and nowadays with technology and being able to use QuickBooks online which monitors my travelling, my work travelling and things like that, it has made it so much more of a joy than it ever used to be. And the fact that I can just take a photograph of a receipt and send it straight to um, my account is just phenomenal. So there is a lot more ease with it than there ever used to be, but it's still something I have to motivate myself for. And another period of time that I've realised that motivation is something that I need is when I'm starting something new. So for instance, if I have been off kilter for a little bit and I've got to get back into exercising, um, there's a certain amount of motivation that kind of comes in there. Um, and once I start flowing with it, once I'm in the rhythm of doing the exercise, then, then there's no motivation needed. Then I love the feeling of my body getting stronger and I love the feeling of um, being out there and doing whatever it is that I'm doing. But there is that kind of in initial motivation sometimes 
to get me started. And I always think that that's, I don't know why I think of a train, <laughs> but I do, I think of a train. And I kind of think, you know, to get something started, sometimes it needs a little bit more of an oomph um, than once it's actually freely, mo freely moving. So I do think that there's still a place for motivation in this world, um, that it's still important and, and you might find that your life consists of more motivation than inspiration. And, and I think this is really what I want this video to be about, is being able to gauge where you are in your life and being able to reflect and saying to yourself, what percentage of my life do I use motivation? And what percentage of my life do I use inspiration? And being able to balance that and to bring up the space for inspiration. Because when you become inspired, when you follow an inspired thought, when you allow space for inspiration, and when it bubbles up or comes down or however it comes into you, and it sort of creates this energy in you that you just can't sort of prevent yourself from getting excited and wanting to follow where that inspiration goes. It is the most beautiful feeling. And the more you bring into that, that into your life, the more synchronicities you find, the more serendipities, um, the more magic and beauty that you find in your life. And also the space, the time between idea and creation becomes so much shorter. When we use the traditional method of having sitting here and seeing where you want to go, and thinking, okay, how do I get there? And logically looking at all the data that you've held in your mind and saying, okay, well, if I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this, I will get there. That's very constrained by time and space. Um, it's very constrained by, by the, the sort of physical world that we live in. But when you use inspiration, that timeline disappears. Because inspiration, it's like it's a wormhole or a time wormhole or a loophole or something. And it can magically sort of bring you to a conclusion or to something greater than you ever anticipated um, that you couldn't even comprehend in your mind in the data that you have. It's like this magical spell that if you follow it, will bring you to a space way beyond what you could comprehend in your head in a time that is so much quicker and shorter than you could have ever thought about. The other thing about motivation and inspiration is that motivation, you have to use your own energy and to continually have to mot motivate yourself is exhausting. And this is why I sort of say you need to look at the balance because if your life is predominantly through motivation, if you live your life through motivation and making yourself do things and feeling you have to, you should, you must, then you might find you get drained very, very easily. The more you live your life through inspiration, um, when you get an inspired idea, it's almost like it comes with its own energy package and it ignites this, this energy in you that it gives you the resources to be able to follow it through. Um, you can feel there's an excitement. Um, it's a little bit like falling in love. Um, you know when you fall in love with someone? Well, I hope at some point you felt that. Um, it's like you have this energy, you have so much more energy than you ever would before. And I think that that's because you're open. And when we're open, then source can flow through us. And that is what inspiration is. It's a spark of source, spark of that collective consciousness that you allow into you. And as it comes, it allows and it brings in its own energy from source into you, which makes every part of you tingle and fizz and bubble. And the last thing that I want to say on this is that when you follow that inspired thought, just be very aware that your subconscious programming and your old beliefs might come in and make you feel either doubt yourself that you're able to do this, it might make you feel self-conscious. It might make you think that um, you're being silly and that you're not being practical. All of these things come in from your old patterns and your old thinking, and it's your subconscious, your ego's way of trying to keep you safe in what you've always done. So especially initially when you start following inspiration, you need to have a little bit of courage. Courage to follow that beautiful, wonderful, I sort of see it like a golden thread through life. 
um, courage to trust yourself and to build self-trust and self-belief. Um, and I've done a video on that as well. And all the things that I've talked about, I'll put in the notes below so that you can find them easily should you be interested. But following that is, it is where the magic is in life. It is where the beauty and the excitement and it's the expansion of all that you know that you truly are as a creative being. Um, and it's so worth it. I've loved sharing this with you and I've loved co-creating this video with all the wonderful people that interacted with me on my social media platforms. So thank you so very much. And as I said, I'll give you credit in the notes and I'll link you in the post as well so that you can see what actually showed up from it so long ago. Um, if you have liked this, um, I so appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments, um, your subscriptions. It means a lot to me. Um, and if you want any more resources, because I have a lot of resources, you can find them on my website, www.britannia.com. B-R-I-T-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.